everyone. Thank you for coming back to my channel. I'm Stephanie if you're new here. Today we are going to be doing something just a little bit different than usual for my channel. But I reached out to somebody a while ago and I asked if she would like to do a homeschools collab with me. But I didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to talk about yet with her and to share with you guys um, on her channel and my channel. The more we thought about it and the things that we are um, have familiar with each other is our homeschooling, our faith with homeschooling, and then just our faith in general. Um, we both are Christian and we both homeschool. So I thought it would be fun for us to share our views on how and why we chose to homeschool and why we chose to tie in our faith with that. And then just like a little background, how we became a Christian and stuff like that. And then I also thought it would be fun for us to share like our rules and guidelines through our state and things that we need to follow um, for us to be able to homeschool and to be uh, more private with our homeschool and being able to tie our faith into it. So before I start, I want to introduce you guys to her. Her channel is One Single Joy. Her name is Danny. She has a 12 year old girl and she's been homeschooling, I think she said for like four years. Um, but over on her channel, she has, on Monday, she has her, she has more of a schedule, I think, than I do. I I'm kind of all over the place. The only thing that I have scheduled are my air fryer videos. But anyway, so she's really scheduled over there. She has a better outline than I do. But her Mondays are for homeschool. And then Wednesday is uh, more faith-based and studies and different thing, things like that. So if you guys are into... Um, the homeschool part, you'll be able to check her videos out on Monday and then more faith-based stuff on Wednesday. So yeah, so I like that she does that because I know a lot of people that go to our channels are gonna come on them days and expect certain videos on them days and it's really nice for us to be able to schedule that way but maybe one day I'll get a little bit better <laughs> So, all right. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe because we have other things that are going to be coming this year when it comes to homeschool and all of that stuff. So don't forget to subscribe quick. And then also I want you guys to go over to her channel and subscribe so you don't miss out on her stuff because she has like a whole wide range of things just besides the homeschool and faith. She does. I just watched a video that just today actually on um, chatting about her meal planning and stuff like that. So that one was a fun video. But so also when you go over there, comment in her comments and just let her know that I sent you guys over there. So hopefully we can uh, share the same ideas with each other. The only thing that's really fun about this video that I guess I didn't realize at first when I reached out to her is she is from Sydney, Australia. So we are from complete different areas and for us to have similar views is kind of fun and exciting. Uh, she has like a fun story over there about uh, some stuff about visiting our area. So um, check that out. And then what else? So I think of something else. Um, oh, one of the things that I told her too is that, that I loved her accent and that was before I even knew that she was from there. So that was kind of cool but with her and homeschool if you guys are homeschooling or into that you guys know your rules and state guidelines and stuff it was fun to kind of hear hers because of being in complete different areas we all have different things that we need to follow so go check that out um and we're also with her channel and her daughter being 12 she kind of goes over like preteen stuff with you guys too so Kind of so if you guys end up going over to her channel, come back to my channel and let me know that you guys went over there because we both want to share this with you guys and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. All right, so I'm going to start out with my, um, my faith background and when things started for me. I won't like go complete in detail with everything but I just want to give you a little background on that and then I really want to talk to you more about our homeschool and kind of that route with it. 
Okay, when I was younger, I was brought up in a Catholic background. I went to a Catholic school. Um, but when I got to become a teenager, I no longer was going to church and I really didn't follow any um, church background or anything. I completely fell away from all of that. When I was 19 years old, I was actually pregnant with my second child at the time. And my sister, my oldest sister, started going to this church in the town that nearby us or whatever. At the town I was there. And it was downstairs in a basement. It was really, really tiny. And maybe like 50 people, if that, maybe. And uh, so I started going there. And I continued going there. So I was now out of high school. Now being responsible for two children at the time and still desiring to continue with my faith. Um, but I also was pregnant, not married. So I still was questioning a lot of stuff when it came to uh, where I stood with my faith and my beliefs. So I know I needed it. I know I needed that in my life, but I just didn't know how to follow everything at that time. So I continued to go and the more I went and after our church actually moved into a different area, I followed them to that area, um, continued to go. And then they actually were able to build the place that we're at right now. And I was able to follow and I continued to follow. So that's just kind of like a quick oversight of that. But I soon became a Christian after that. I ended up getting baptized later when I met my husband, we both got baptized. I think we both got baptized on the same day. So the thing with Lauren though is, or my husband, is that he also came from a Catholic background. And when I introduced him to the place that I was going, things to him were kind of off at first until we continued to go. And he really felt comfortable with being there. Um, so then we started going to Bible studies and continued with that. And then we both got baptized. So that's pretty much just a little insight of when I became a Christian, how I became a Christian and the lifestyle that we were living that we chose to change, uh, after we got married and tried to follow, uh, more stricter guidelines when it came to that. So, um, and then the two of the kids that I had actually continued to go to the same church with us. And then the more kids we had, they also enjoyed being there. We, um, two of my kids, no, three of my kids actually go to youth group now there. And we are connected with our church by volunteering. My husband does security there. And then I also with two of my other children, Cajun and Eli, uh, we do the nursery every uh, every other Sunday, something like that. So right now we are just starting back up because of COVID and we are able to go now. Otherwise, we had some online stuff that we could follow when we weren't able to go. So we have a kids ministry and then we also have an adult ministry. So in the morning, we would start out with the kids ministry videos and then we would move on to ours but as for our church now um the kids depending on what sunday it is have di different uh different things that they get to do and we get to teach and stuff like that so that's a little bit about my church and how i started to become a christian and stuff like that so i just wanted to be really brief but if you want more in details of me and lauren and our views on all of it, leave them in the comments down below and I'd be more than happy to share that with you guys. On to homeschooling. I was, so you guys know already, I was a single mom. Um, I worked full time and I was, that was kind of like a future like view of how maybe I wanted to homeschool. I have a bunch of sisters that homeschooled, still homeschool, sister-in-laws that homeschool, sister-in-laws that did homeschool. We were never homeschooled. My husband was never homeschooled. Either were my sisters were never homeschooled, but we have a homeschool background now because we all homeschooled our kids. Um, Gage and, or no, Victoria and uh, Blaine, we pulled them out in sixth grade and third grade. So I was pregnant with Gage at the time and we 
had the conversation of were we able to do that? Was I able to not work full time to be able to stay home and teach these guys? So I was going to be home anyways because I just had a baby. I started working part time after that and we just kind of weighed the odds of do we want to have a good income versus saving money for me to be able to stay home and homeschool. So that's kind of the route that we chose. And then, um, so for, for us, pulling the kids out of school really wasn't a big deal after that because uh, we really knew where we wanted to go with that. My husband's background is not, was not for the homeschool setting. Uh, he wasn't, uh, let's see, how did I say that? Like that whole idea at first was kind of confusing because his sister was a teacher and they just had more views on just, you know, your kids being in school and learning that kind of education and making sure that they got the education that they needed versus being at home and not socializing and stuff like that. So, because there's a lot of different views on not socializing while you're in homeschool, but I don't know, my kids socialize, so I'm not sure how that goes. But anyways, off that note. So that's why we chose to homeschool. We knew that we were able to cut back on finances. And uh, I guess one of the things with homeschooling, you have to make that decision uh, to look at what ways the odds of homeschooling or being able to maybe work part-time or whatever it takes for you guys to have the finances to be able to continue to do that. Um, with my husband being self-employed, we still struggle in some ways when it comes to finances, but we chose to live this way and have children and homeschool. Okay, so that's one of our decisions on why we chose the homeschool. Another decision that we made and what was... Um, I guess when I first started, I had a lot of help because I had a lot of people that were doing it. So when I jumped into it, I knew that I needed to pick a curriculum that was going to work for us. Uh, when I started, I ended up buying like every book um, that did, probably didn't need to be purchased at the time, but I didn't know because now I've been homeschooling for 15 years. I kind of know what I can purchase and what I can't or what's not going to work for our family. So at the time um, when I started, I wanted to get a curriculum that was going to fit me and Victoria and Blaine at the time. Something that I was able to teach them. Um, at the time, we knew that we wanted to cover um, or have a faith-based curriculum. We knew that that was important to us. Uh, so we ended up going with Becca at that time. And that was something that uh, really worked for us at the time. So you kind of have trial and error with the homeschool stuff that you pick or curriculum that you pick. And that's okay. So another thing is... Um, I ended up switching later on. Uh, I kind of do that. <laughs> if you guys check on one of my other videos, oh, before this year, I ended up switching my curriculum right before school started. Not a good idea. But anyways, so, and I even, I think I even have a video on that. But if I do, I'll leave it up here. I don't remember which one it was, but I know that I kind of like, oh, it was last minute decision. But anyways, okay, so at the time, I ended up switching a couple times to different curriculums, things that would meet our needs and things that would work for us and things that maybe were missing that I needed to fill in. So some of the stuff I bought on Amazon and I would go through the comments and read like, what is it based on? Some of them weren't Christian related, but I wanted to make sure the the values were there, that my kids weren't reading something that didn't fit to the value of what we believe. So I kind of kept track of a lot of that kind of stuff. And then um, later on, I ended up switching to Baden staff, and that is more Mennonite based. And that is strictly uh, faith based. Uh, so their reading books is basically um, everything biblical. So, um, uh, the reading books were like, you know, starting with Genesis and then working their way up. So a lot of it really didn't go off of anything that was, um, 
I don't want to say worldly, but they just were right on track with the faith-based curriculum that we wanted for our kids. And it was easy enough for us to be able to read and understand it and not worry about what I was teaching my kids and things that were false teachings and uh, stuff that we didn't believe in. So that is what I was using for many, 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 many years. I still have all the curriculum, but like I said, I switched this year. I went back to Abeka and that is currently what we're using right now. I am looking into another curriculum, but that will be a whole new video later on in life. And I will discuss all of that with you guys later. And there's not really a reason why. Um, a Becca can be kind of expensive and I want to be able to know that I can afford that for the kids versus maybe something else that we can uh, get a little bit cheaper, but still have the faith-based uh, you know, stuff for that. So that's kind of why we kept up with more of a faith-based Christian life. So another thing that we try to tie in with that, even though all our curriculum is faith-based, uh, we try to do Bible, we have Bible study, the kids, our Gage had a curriculum online that he was doing for Bible. He did that for a while and now they strictly read their Bible at nighttime. And then he recently just got a kind of a study, study Bible and um, he is going off of that right now. But Gage is in high school, so that is part of not necessarily the guidelines that we have to follow for curriculum wise, but like electives and faith based stuff. So. We keep up with his a little bit different than the elementary grade and uh, that's just what we need to do when it comes to that. But a lot of times um, with us doing a faith-based curriculum, um, that's usually our daily intake of all our Bible stuff. So um, even if we aren't like in the Word, reading the Bible at the time, we are with all of the curriculum so everything is uh you know dives deep into that anyways so we have a lot of that with the kids and the things that they read now the my little ones are doing highlights this year and that is not christian based at all so with them it's more reading to them reading the bible to them um and teaching them that way versus having it in the curriculum but I did it just for an experiment this year and I want to go back to having them on something else. So they might either go back to um, the Rod and Staff, Abeka, or there's I need to like look more into, but I do have a lot of the Rod and Staff. I don't have a lot for Becca, but that's something that I have to look into and see if I want to do that with them. Um, and usually what I do is at the end of the year, I try to look over everything and then, you know, like get my list together and then figure out what I want to get for them. So even if their stuff right now isn't Bible based, we still tie it in somewhere in our week or our daily stuff. So that is what I have for our homeschool. Now on to like the rules and regulations. What was kind of cool is she was able to talk about hers there. I'm not going to tell you what hers is, but you can go over there. So hers is completely kind of different than ours um, in some ways because I think she, she, even though she, oh, I can't say, but like we have just a little bit different, a little bit different on things. Um, here we have way more like in the United States where we live, I don't know state by state their guidelines, but I know for our state, ours are a little bit more relaxed. We don't rely on anybody. We don't have to talk to anybody. We don't have to have guidelines really from anybody. Um, we can have faith-based curriculum. The only way that you have to follow a certain guideline is if you are going through like a charter school or you're signing up through another company that you're using to use for homeschool. We don't do that. We are strictly on our own and I can choose absolutely anything that I want to do. I do not really have any guidelines or I do not talk to anybody about the things that I do with my children. So as for Gage though in high school, 
his just needs to be documented because of being in high school. So them are the rules and same as like if you were to go to high school and you would have your transcript and all of that. So that's kind of what I follow with Gage. I follow the credits and the that kind of stuff. So the things that he needs to achieve through high school, that's all I really have to do with him. But let me go over like some of our state rules and stuff that we kind of need to follow. Okay, one of the things when school starts, so like um, September or whatever, a lot of the homeschool groups end up like registering our kids a little bit later and we go on to our like our homeschool sign up and I have that all listed down below. I have like rules and laws and then attorney stuff down there. Everything that you can follow if you guys are interested in signing up for homeschool. Just make sure that you're going to the right state that you live in and look up the rules and stuff that you need to follow. But for where we live, we need to have 875 hours of homeschool. One of the ways that we like try to track our homeschool days is I have a little like... Um, I showed it in one of my other videos and I have it on my website. It's just a little sheet and it has a bunch of light bulbs on it. If I if I remember, I'll leave it down below or like, I don't know, I'll think of something. But you check off a light bulb every single day that you do homeschooling and you have to have 180 days of homeschool equals the 875 hours all right so that was a little confusing for me at first because when i went i wish i would have known that like a long time ago because i i thought i think that would have been fun for my kids to be able to check off in the past but we just started that maybe like two or some years ago so it's kind of fun but um even my daughter she also i think she uses it too and she's homeschooling two of her three so one is like really into homeschooling right now and the other one is kind of like preschool and stuff like that so my daughter also homeschools um so that's kind of cool she is an at-home mom too and she homeschools so yeah um but so that's one of the things that's mainly pretty much all we need to follow so like i said if you are in like a charter schooler then you're gonna have more rules but for us we just have to follow the hours and make sure that we register our kids. So that's it. We don't have to, you know, nobody's gonna talk to us, nobody's gonna ask us questions, nobody's going to come to us and see what we're using. Um, it's all based on our decision. And then when my oldest boy graduated from high school, I was able to print him off a, a homeschool diploma so that was kind of cool that I was able to have control over that and some of the things that we enjoy with homeschooling is to be able to have that control over what we are teaching our kids and all the things that we are preventing them from being involved in versus being in a public school uh, we raise our kids to be a little bit different than some public schools we tried to keep them um, not mixed in with all like the peer pressure and that kind of stuff. So we kind of, you know, sway our kids to go this way and hopefully that they follow that for the rest of their life and continue to follow a faith-based uh, lifestyle. Um, but that is our goal and them are some of the things. So like, I really don't even have a lot to share when it comes to our rules and stuff. So she has a little bit more. So hers is a little bit more interesting because of what she had to say about it there was kind of like let me put it this way she she said that her rules and everything there were stricter than maybe some places or the area that she was in were stricter but I will let you hear her response to that when you go check out her video because that is kind of neat to hear other places um sometimes when we homeschool I don't always like look into other areas and the things that other people are doing so it was fun to do this video with her because I get to know her in a different way off of YouTube, um, connecting with her, with um, her privately in messages and stuff like that, um, which we probably would never ever meet in person with us being completely on different 
areas, but it still was nice to meet her and stuff like that. So hopefully I went over everything today that would make sense to our homeschool journey. I didn't want to ramble on too much and give you all this information. You guys didn't understand it. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Don't forget to go over to Danny's channel on One Single Joy and just let her know that I sent you guys over there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up though because that lets YouTube know that you guys are enjoying my videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be having more homeschool stuff through the rest of our, you know, year with homeschooling. All the changes and stuff that I might be doing sometime soon. So. Otherwise, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.